What happens when you have too many ideas? How do you choose? How do you figure out which ones you should pursue? Well, we're going to talk about that coming up next. Hi everybody, my name is Dee Burks and this is Retirement Rescue where we talk about how to make money, save money, and create a retirement from nothing. Now in a previous video I talked about inspiration and how it works and how it can bring you tons of ideas. In fact, I'll link it here. What happens when you have lots of ideas? How do you choose between them? How do you know what to pursue or what to wait on? Well, for me, it's all about prioritizing. And usually that means prioritizing things with a timeline. And especially if they're income producing, those things come first. Needless to say, that's really important to my life because I have to make a living and you do too. So there may be things you have to do and those things have to come first. And then the ideas you want to work on, you can create in order to prioritize those. But let's talk about how you capture those ideas in order to put them in a lineup because that's what you're doing. You're creating a lineup just like it's a baseball team. <laughs> so let's talk about how you capture those. Now one of the things that I do is that I write my ideas down when they occur. So I'll take a minute. If I come up with an idea for a novel, for a book, I'll write that down right quick in an electronic file on my computer. I have an idea file. I have a book idea file. I have a business idea file. I have lots of idea files. <laughs> and I'll put it in its proper file. And I'll save it away. And I'll do that with all my ideas when they happen. I don't wait because I promise you I'm going to forget it. You know how that is. You think, oh, I'll remember. I'll write it down. And it's gone. <laughs> now, if it's a good idea, odds are it will come back to you because that happens a lot. But I try to write it down when it happens. Now, that doesn't mean every idea I have is some sort of fully formed creation. Nine times out of ten, it's not. It's just a snippet of an idea. Uh, when I'm writing books, maybe it's a snippet of a conversation, a one particular type of character, one story premise, uh, one inciting incident, whatever it is, I'll write it down. Same is true with business. If I have ideas for other YouTube channels, I'll write them down and put them in their file. Ever so often, I'll revisit that file and I'll read through those things again. I try to do it at least once a year, if not more often. But at least once a year, I will read through all of those files and say, okay, is there anything I should be taking action on? How has this changed? Inevitably, I will have learned something that year that changes some of those ideas. I'll add to them. Maybe I'll delete some that are just completely uh, not workable. I'll go through and evaluate them. Okay, who needs to be in the lineup this next three months, this next six months, this next year? And I never throw away what I feel like is a good idea. An example of that is a novel idea that I came up with about 13 years ago. 13 years, y'all. And it's been sitting in my idea file <laughs> that long. And it's changed and grown. I'm now writing that book. Because it's finally come to the point I feel like, okay, this is at the top of the lineup. This needs to be done now. And that's how I prioritize them. And then I put them in the lineup and I start doing little steps every day. I make goals. You know, how much am I going to write today? What am I going to do today? Um, if I'm setting up another YouTube channel, what am I going to film? What's going to be my rate of posting? Um, how am I going to position it for the audience? All of those things come from my idea file. It's very much like your idea is the little seed. And you have to wait for that seed to germinate and then grow a little bit before you figure out, okay, what is this going to become? Is it going to become part of something else? Is it going to become something I uh, cull, that I delete? Is this going to be become something huge? And so those ideas are always in the mix. Now, while I'm letting those ideas percolate and I'm adding new ideas all the time, I am also learning the skill set that I may need to bring some of those to life. I wanted to do a YouTube channel 10 years ago. I in no way had any of the skills 
back in 2010, 2011. I didn't have any of the skills that I needed to do YouTube. I didn't really understand it. I didn't, you know, I just wasn't ready. But the idea sat in my idea file. I want to do a YouTube channel about something, you know, and it sat there and it sat there. There's a lot going on in everyone's life. And you have to prioritize things differently in your life depending on what's going on. I mean, you still have to earn a living. You still have to raise your children. But when the time came, which was 2019, and I had the time and the ability to learn the skill set, I started my YouTube channel at the very beginning of 2020. And I started learning those skills in the fall before I launched my YouTube channel in 2020. So... Those ideas never go away. They never dry up. They're always valid in some way. And you can always act upon them. Another idea I had was, one of these days, I want to learn to paint. I mean, the closest I ever got to painting as a kid was paint by numbers. That's I, I didn't know how to paint. I had one of those older sisters who is good at everything. And when you have a sibling that's good at everything, you convince yourself not to try things because you won't be good at them. You feel like you have to be perfect at everything. Well, I finally decided... A year and a half ago to learn to oil paint. I went and took a class with a very well-known oil painter. Um, I practiced. I figured out I couldn't draw. I can't draw. My drawings look like stick figures. So I took a few months and I learned to draw. I learned to draw basic things and then I learned to draw more complex things. And now here it is a year and a half later my artwork is selling. I'm getting commissions. It's kind of taken off a life of its own. I will probably have an art YouTube channel before long because I already have the skill set. It's easy to add when you gain those skills. One of the hindrances that a lot of people have is they have a big idea. And they think, well, gosh, do I really want to go big? I would say, go big. Go big or go home. <laughs> you know, There's a lot to that. When you try something big, even if you fail at it, even if it doesn't work, you learn so much. You know, when I first started painting, one of the first paintings I did was a 30 by 30 painting. It turned out great. It was a struggle and it was hard. But I'm so glad I did because when you go big and you accomplish one big thing that's big to you, may not be big to other people, but it's big to you. <laughs> Maybe it's finishing that book, finishing that novel, uh, shooting a video and uploading a short video. Maybe it's going on a trip just to do photography. Wildlife photography, urban photography, really indulging those areas that you want to improve upon. Go ahead and do the scary ideas. Stretch yourself. It is when you stretch yourself, you become the most authentic version of you. You're out there on a limb and you're out there all by yourself. And you're either going to make it or not make it based on you. And when you make it, you feel great. You feel really great. And nobody can ever take that away from you. And when you do have those moments where you accomplish a goal, you sell your first painting, you finish your novel, you create a business that you've dreamt about for years, celebrate. Feel good about yourself that you did that much. You got that far. It's so much farther than most people ever get. So make good use of all those ideas you have. Figure out where they fit in the lineup and then start doing them. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe and I'll see you next time.